Hello guys, Sox Studio here and for today I am going to show you on how I was able to create this exterior rendered image using SketchUp, Lumion, and Adobe Photoshop. The original creator for this awesome 3D model is Agus Kayonowit and his links will be on the description down below. For those of you who would like to download the SketchUp and Lumion file for this particular model, I had it posted in my Gumroad website which is called MVH3. You can download the SketchUp and Lumion file for free or <laughs> The Lumion version used for MVH3 is Lumion 10 while the SketchUp version is 2020. So here is the SketchUp model for MVH3. It is a two-story house with a rustic and modern design. I'm not really sure if the house has a second floor or if the design is modern, but we move. When creating the landscape in front of the house, I usually make a circular shape that has a different grass texture from the rest of the landscaping grass. This is so that we could apply the 3D grass texture on the circular part and not affect the other grass textures. I also recently started adding this dirt pathwalk inside the circular grass texture just make sure to always make the edges of the pathwalk a bit flowy and not straight this is to add realism i also like to make the landscaping in front of the house a bit slanted down this would enable us to capture more of the road and the main house after the landscaping i made a standard road six meters in width also adding the white lane markings in the middle with adjacent 1.8 meter wide pathwalks in both sides after the road it's time for the main house setbacks on the front is key as well as the carport always try to make your house a bit elevated from the road and also adding a slope in the carport i like to add this huge landscape surrounding the main house this is so that when i plan to put different models as backgrounds it would be the same level with the main house another reason is so that i could change the default grass texture in lumion make sure that the grass textures from the front setbacks is different from the landscaping surrounding the main house and that is pretty much it for the sketchup model let's now export the file and choose 3d model we are going to convert this to a collada file so that we could import it into lumion later this is important since we might want to use some of the textures used on the sketchup model when editing in lumion you can find the folder for the textures near the collada file after exporting let's now open lumion i am going to import the collada file that we just made earlier here it is let's start by adding the pin lights on both the inside and the outside of the house The reason why I like to start off with the lights is so that when we are editing the textures for the materials, we would be able to distinguish the amount of glossiness of the material due to the light reflection. I also like to add pin lights on the inside that are inverted on the floor. This is so that more light can be seen from the outside and the ceilings would be lit up as well. After the lights, it's time for the entourage. I usually put a lot of plants surrounding the house. This is so that the horizon on the back would be covered. I like to put plants on the front near our camera's focal point which is located here. I also like to add tall trees on the rear as well as snags or dead trees. These are some of the plants that I usually use whenever I do exterior renderings. Let's now click the camera icon. I already captured two images and edited the rendering effects for one of them. The focal length used for the captured image is 36.7 millimeters. So here are the rendering effects that I used for this image. First, I used the print poster enhancer effects. Enabled should be on. After the print poster enhancer, I used the fog effects. Fog density is 1.3. Fog falloff is 0. Fog brightness is 0.6. And brightness is 1. After the fog, I use the autumn colors effects. The default settings for the autumn colors should be already good. After the autumn colors, I use the lens flare effects. Streak intensity should be 0.8. Streak rotation is 1. Streak count is 4. Streak dispersion is 0.7. Streak fall off is 1.7. Bloom amount should be 0.5. Master brightness is 0. Anamorphic streak amount is 0. Ghosting amount is 0. Isolate bright pixels is 0. Halo amount 
mount is zero and lens dirt amount is zero. After the lens flare, I use the noise effects. Intensity should be zero, color is zero, and size should be one. After the noise, I use the bloom effects. Let's set the bloom amount to 0.2. After the bloom, I use the global illumination effects. Sun amount should be zero, fall off speed is one, reduce spots is one, sun max effect distance is 30 meters, and preview spotlight GI and shadows should be on. After the global illumination, I use the real skies effects. For the real sky option, I use the morning 2 on the morning tab. Heading is negative 139.1 degrees, brightness is 1.4, and overall brightness is 1.4 as well. After the real skies, I use the sharpen effects. Intensity is 0.1. After the sharpen, I use the exposure effects. Exposure is 0.6. After the exposure, I use the color correction effects. Temperature should be 0.4, tint is 0.2, vibrance is 0, brightness is 0.7, contrast is 0.5, saturation is 1, gamma correction is 1, limit low is 0, and limit high is 1. After the color correction, I use the reflection effects. Reflection threshold should be 25 centimeters, preview quality is high, and speed rate reflections should be on. For the edit reflection planes, I simply selected all of the glass which could be seen in front of the house. After the reflection, I used the hyperlight effects. Amount is 30.1% and enable preview should be on. After the hyperlight, I used the skylight effects. Brightness should be 1.2, saturation is 1.1, skylight in planar reflections, and skylight in projected reflections should be on, and render quality should be ultra. After the skylight, I used the shadow effects. Sun shadow range is 389 meters, color is 0. 0.3, brightness is 0, interior exterior is 0, omni shadow is 0.5, shadow correction is 0, shadow type should be normal, and soft shadows and fine detail shadows should be on. And that is pretty much it for the Lumion rendering effects. Let's now render this image. Let's use the print size or 3840 by 2160 so that the image would be able to handle the post production process well. Here's the result of the rendered image made using Lumion. And let's now proceed with the post-production. So let's open the rendered image in Adobe Photoshop CC. Click the background layer and let's change it into layer 0. Then press OK. After that, press Ctrl Shift A to open the camera raw filter. Let's set the saturation to plus 5, vibrance to plus 11, the haze would be plus 23, clarity is plus 88. And let's set the texture to negative 75. After that, let's adjust just these settings. We are going to lessen the black elements on this image as well as the highlights. Alright, this is good enough. Press OK. After the camera raw filter, let's add the Gaussian blur effect. Hold Alt, then drag the layer 0 down. A layer 0 copy should come out. Then drag it above layer 0 without holding Alt. Change the normal setting into soft light, then adjust the opacity to 35%. Go to filters, then select blur, and under the blur effect, select Gaussian blur. Radius should be 5 pixels. Then and press OK. After the Gaussian blur, let's add the high pass effect. Press Ctrl Shift Alt E. A layer 1 should appear above layer 0 copy. Then press Ctrl Shift U. The layer 1 should turn black and white. Change the normal setting into overlay and set the opacity into 25%. Go to filters and select others. Then select high pass. Radius should be 10 pixels. Then press OK. Let's now save this rendered image. Quality should be 12 and maximum. We could still improve this, I think we should reduce the textures a bit and also reduce the temperature so that the image would appear to have a more blue atmosphere. So let's open the previously saved image that we just did. Let's click the background layer and we are going to change this into layer 0. Press OK. Press Ctrl Shift A to open the camera raw filter. Let's set the texture to negative 25 and adjust these settings next. We are going to lessen the black elements again. Lastly, 
let's set the temperature to negative 5. Alright, this is good. Press OK. Let's now save this rendered image. Quality should be 12 and maximum. And that is pretty much it for the post-production process. Here's the difference between the rendered image with just rendering it with Lumion and after applying the post-production with Adobe Photoshop CC. I hope that you've learned something new from this video. Thanks so much for watching and have a good day.